Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome uh, to the report out on what's a, a unique RPIW. I'm going to start by introducing myself. My name is Mark White. I'm the uh, Executive Director of the Provincial Surgical Kaizen Operations Team and also the Saskatchewan Surgical Initiative. Uh, we are joined here in Regina by, of course, our RPIW team, but we also have uh, many representatives from, uh, I see lots of faces from both the region and some from the ministry joining us here on site at the Regina General Hospital. Uh, again, because of the unique uh, element of this RPIW, we're doing this by telehealth and we have the uh, RPIW team in Sunrise, uh, located in Yorkton, that is uh, joining us by telehealth. We've also extended this to all of the other health regions, and I believe we have a site in the ministry. So I know that there, will, I know that uh, we had confirmation of at least a few other uh, health regions that are uh, joining us by telehealth to uh, to take in the report out, and uh, and it's an opportunity to share some of the progress that's been uh, made this week uh, right across the province on an issue that uh, I think is a, a common concern. Um, this is, uh, as I said, unique in a number of ways. It's the first and first and second RPIWs conducted by the Provincial Surgical Kaizen Operation Team. Um, we call it PSCOT, so we don't have to say that uh, over and over and over. Uh, so it's the first, uh, the first two RPIWs that have been initiated by the uh, by PSCOT. Um, but uh, it really has been the teams on the ground here in Regina and, and, and in York and with Sunrise Health Region that are uh, doing the heavy lifting and the hard work and so uh, great uh, credit to the teams. I'm just going to offer a couple other thoughts before we turn it over to the Regina team. Discharge planning has been something that's been happening within regions and we've struggled for many, many years, those who have been part of that struggle, to look at how we can improve dis uh, discharge planning and repatri repatriation of patients across regional boundaries. And there have been committees and more committees and meetings and more meetings trying to get at this. And so what we have really wanted to do was use the RPIW and put the rapid in this whole area of, of improving discharge across regional boundaries. And that's the, re the reason that, we, uh, that brings two regions to, together today in, uh, in this uh, RPIW week. So with, uh, with that, by introduction, I want to introduce uh, Dawn Calder, who is the team lead, and she will uh, carry it away with the Regina team. Thanks, Mark. It really is our privilege to be involved in the first of the peace, Scott. That saved me a couple of seconds. I don't have to spell out the whole thing anymore. Uh, as Mark said, my name is Don Calder. I'm the team lead for this particular project. As you can see from the um, standard work combination sheet above, as our agenda, we'll be reporting to a tag time of 20 minutes. Next, we have our illustrious team photo. I have to tell you, this has been an absolute pleasure. We didn't go through the usual Wednesday hump, and they will each introduce themselves as they go through the process. Next, we have our, our project form, which describes in a lot more detail what we were intending to accomplish. We were reducing the lead time, which is the length of stay, and ensuring defect-free information for patients being transferred from from Regina to the most appropriate facility close to home in Sunrise. Our current situation had been that often there was a lack of available beds in Sunrise, so patients would wait here. Sunrise didn't know uh, what patients were receiving care in Regina, and we had incomplete handoffs for patients returning to Sunrise. A couple of the graphs, I just want to show you the first one. The tallest bar on the left simply indicates that Orthopedic surgery represents the highest volume of patients that we return to Sunrise. And the next graph simply indicates when we place Sunrise, when we phone Sunrise to place a patient, how many days does it take to get a bed? That first tall bar is day zero. In other words, the patient goes the day we call for a bed, but all those other bars indicate the number of days patients had been waiting over the last year. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lori Ulbren from the Cypress Health Region, and I've been the sub-team lead for this RPOW this week. I just want to talk first about some of the targets that we had set and hope to uh, achieve some improvement on this week. The first was lead time, or the total time that the patient spent in the tertiary centre, uh, pre-Kaizen 8.6 days, and we hope to take that to 6.9. We had a number of quality defects. A couple of those were 
uh, looking at the number of patients that don't transfer to uh, Sunrise when Regina is ready, and that was happening about 50% of the time previously, and we wanted to get that to zero. Also, the number of times that Sunrise did not get informed of the uh, patient in Regina by D minus three, that wasn't happening pre-Kaizen, and we wanted to see a 50% improvement on that. Uh, set up, this is looking at uh, the number of times that the TDD, the tentative discharge date, is entered on the whiteboard in patients' rooms, and we had a 75% defect pre-Kaizen, we wanted to get that to 37 and a half. Lastly, uh, there's were 5.9 discharges on average from 5F, and we had wanted to see if we could take that to 7. So our, our attack time, we know that most, the majority of transfers do take place during the day shift, so we looked at a 12-hour day shift. Uh, when we took away the time that staff have for breaks and huddles and other meetings, we had 540 minutes. Uh, we had the 5.9 discharges a day, so that gave us attack time of 91 minutes. So this is our current state now. And the bottom shows the flow of the patient uh, coming into Regina, having their surgery, going to recovery, and then going to 5F for the majority of their post-op care. Bit of a wait sometimes till we get the discharge order, and then another wait until we get the bed in the home region. You'll see some boxes up sort of in the mid-range there that deal with the communication that we need to uh, get to the home region so that they can provide safe care, the doctor-to-doctor -doctor handoff, the nurse-to-nurse -nurse handoff, and also the unit coordinators gather and uh, arrange a lot of information for the home region about the patient. All the little red bubbles are our ideas for improvement, and I'll let the rest of the team talk about those. Good afternoon. My name is Bev Molson, and I'm an assessment coordinator on Unit 5F at the RGH. As a precursor to this RPIW, a week ago I was involved in a 5S event on Unit 5F. The focus of the event was the office of the unit, unit manager on 5F. We named our project the Big Dig, and our goal was to sort, simplify, and standardize the work area, thus creating a better and more functional environment. Before the 5S event of this office space, you can see there was everything from broken furniture to piles of paper on every level surface with a multiple of safety infractions in between. Much of this clutter, surplus, and waste dated back to the early 1980s. <laughs> Our pre-5S evaluation score was a .05 out of 5. We consistently scored a zero in every category except for one. In other words, with a score of one equaling poor and a score of five and excellent, our score of .05 was less than poor. We hope to achieve a score of three out of five in our post-5S evaluation. The eventual goal of achieving a score of four to five out of five may be realized by sustaining our improvement over a prescribed period of time. Our post-5S evaluation score was a 2.9 out of 5, a change of over 70%. This was a huge improvement. The post-5S event site is functional and efficient, along with pleasing to the eye. The creation of an improved work environment in this one office actually affects the functionality and efficiency of the entire 5F unit. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bill Tarr. As the patient and family representative, my first uh, job was to bring a little life to the work uh, panel. <laughs> and uh, secondly, to look at some problem areas of communication between staff and patients. We found there were white boards in the patient rooms, but only the top part of the boards were being used. There was no information on the boards of therapy times, no target date of approximate release, nothing about where the person would be going when released or how they would get there. You can see from these idea sheets that one of our ideas was to improve the information. As I talked to patients and family members, many had no idea of why the boards were there except to know the doctor and nurse's names. When it was explained to them how this information would be a benefit to them, they thought it would be great. Most patients were not informed of when they were going home until the day they were to be released. Because of this, some were not able to contact family or friends to get a ride home. 
We also felt this information would be very beneficial to them, so we implemented a new board with some added questions which would benefit patients, families, and staff. We feel that was accomplished. My co-worker will share a little more about that. Hi, I'm Sandra Jameen, uh, 5F Charge Nurse. Uh, to enhance our whiteboard patient communication, we maintained the surgical date, target discharge, and staff info at the top, then added a patient and family center communication second section on the left, and a list of patient goals to achieve while they are on working their way to the target discharge date on the lower right. If patients are transferring to our unit for surgery, they will receive a post-op physio assessment and then when stable a transfer to an alternate facility for continued rehab. Uh, there, are, there is a standard work for nurses and therapy in regard to whiteboard updates. The bedside nurse will do a patient and board update daily with a target time of 11 a.m. Time observation for daily updates is approximately between 11 and 25 seconds. Therapy services will assess patients in mobility goals and assess a, assign a sticky note assessment to, to start, pardon me, to the chart and it's added to the patient's bedside progress record. record. There is a standard multiple skills checklist for, uh, for nursing and therapy to keep them in the loop regarding whiteboard updates and continued patient communication. Good afternoon. My name is Marilyn Crows and I am the client navigator with the Cypress Health Region. The theme for our group is to develop a process with the S Sunrise Health Region to reduce lead time for discharges, to ensure defect-free information for transfers between regions, and to decide who is to call EMS for transfers. The spaghetti diagram displays the steps taken by the charge nurse on 5F. The percent load chart indicates discharge activities. The RN, 20 minutes. Charge nurse, 67 minutes. And UC is 23 minutes, all under tag time. The time observed is the time from a written transfer, <coughs> an order that has been received, to the time the patient is actually discharged. Pre-process was 20 hours and 4 minutes. Post-process, 6 hours, 4 minutes. A reduction of 14 hours. The idea summary sheets, the identified problems were, was there was no single contact in the receiving region. The UC makes numerous calls just to speak to the right person. And Sunrise does not know who is in the tertiary hospitals and they do not know the D system status. And we also needed to find a standard process between the utilization coordinator in Regina and Sunrise. Good afternoon. My name is Joanne Don. I'm a utilization coordinator at RQHR. I'd like to report on the huddle. The huddle was established as a method of communication on a daily basis between the Regina Coppell Health Region and Sunrise Health Region. The purpose of the huddle is to identify patients from the Sunrise Health Region who are admitted to RQHR and to plan a target date for transfer. The huddle enables an ongoing communication between the health regions, thus minimizing the barriers of transfer while maximizing the expected date of transfer to home hospital or region. To initiate the huddle, the utilization coordinator at RQHR will fax a list to Sunrise patients. In reference to the percentage load chart, the chart indicates various people are involved in the discharge activity. This chart indicates the increased workload to the utilization coordinator in RQHR. This remains below the TAC time. Initially, the focus of the huddle was specific to orthopedic patients, but now includes most patients from the Sunrise Health Region. The time observation, which included most patients, was 9 minutes and 17 seconds today. There was a standard work created for the utilization coordinators. In addition, a multiple skills training list was developed and some of the healthcare providers required training. 
The Utilization Coordinator, the RQHR, provides a report for each patient in the Sunrise Health region. The document shows, indicates some of the elements for discussion. The patient's information received from the huddle would aid Sunrise in determining the facility that best meets the needs of the patient. Utilization Coordinator will be able to complete patient transfers in a timely and efficient manner while creating seamless patient flow. Most importantly, the patients will benefit by receiving, the ma receiving care that maximizes recovery of their health in their home region aided by family support. Encouraging progressive patient recovery along with efficient health care providers can all be achieved by establishing a method of communication known as the huddle. Hi, I'm Karen Earnshaw from Rural Restorative and Continuing Care with the Regina Capel Health Region. So when Gloria was talking at the start about um, our defects, one of the defects was that we um, discovered that 100% of the time Sunrise was not receiving all of the information that they needed to care for the patients upon transfer. So obviously we want to improve this by 100%. So this idea summary sheet really just represents the fact that there was no clear and current processes for the staff on 5F. Although 5F had a list of what we believe we needed to send, and it was very similar to what um, the receiving location needed, but it wasn't all of what the receiving location needs. So we worked with our partners in Sunrise and on 5F, and we developed standard work. Standard work that, to identify what needs to be done, who needs to do it, and how long it will take. When we put that standard work together, we recognized right away that it, it lent itself very well to a checklist. So we went on to develop a checklist because we understand that often this task of putting all of this information together in the package isn't done by one person. It's usually done by multiple people over multiple shifts. So, so the checklist allows that process to continue, but at the end of it we're clear and we are confident that every piece of information that Sunrise or another receiving facility needs to care for that patient goes and accompanies the patient in hard copy on transfer. So there's one further improvement idea we want to talk about, and this was a real bird under my saddle, so they're letting me, me do the talking. When we arrived on 5F, uh, there's a lot of photocopying that goes along with sending patients to home regions, and we saw that the photocopier was placed on top of a rather high desk. The staff had to stand on a stool to use it, and even then, they were reaching above their arms to, um, to photocopy. So we originally looked at lowering the, the desk if we could, and that wasn't possible. So we found a cart, an uh, unused cart somewhere, and put the photocopier down on it. Now, there's some little concern that it, it does stick out a bit too far, but overall, the response that we've had from the staff on 5F has been quite positive about that. So our future state map. So we were hoping that by um, implementing the improvement ideas we've talked about, doing the daily huddles with Sunrise, getting them a standard package of information, that they would know who their patients are here in Regina and could begin to work to pull them back to home region as soon as possible. In addition, by having the uh, TDD, the t target date of discharge, consistently put up on the whiteboard for patients and adding that little part about the milestones that patients need to achieve to go home, we're hoping that the patients and families will also be engaged in their recovery and, and in essence help themselves to be pulled back to their home region. Some of our progress that we've made this week, uh, the lead time, we started out with an 8.6 day length of stay and got to 3.3 for a 62% change. The number of patients that didn't transfer uh, when Regina was ready to transfer them was 50% and we've got that down to zero, so we achieved 100% change. The percentage of time that Sunrise is not informed of the discharge by D minus three, we got that to 75% at the time it was not, so a 25% change. The use of the whiteboards, uh, our baseline for that was that 75% of the time the whiteboard was not, the TDD was not being entered. Now we did only implement the new template for the whiteboard in five patient uh, beds, and so by the end, by yesterday we had 100% of those TDDs being put in, so um, a zero defect rate for 100% change. Lastly, the number of discharges per day from 5F was 5.9, and we have, uh, a final number of eight discharges per day for 36% change. Our newspaper, this is the list of outstanding things that still need to happen after this week. 
Mo much of the items on this page are to do with teaching the new standard work to the various departments that are involved. So that is uh, the nurses, nursing staff on 5F, the therapists on the satellite station there, the porters that work um, to bringing people to therapy, unit clerk, and also the unit coordinators all need to be made sure that they're all taught in the new process. As well, we did only try the new whiteboard template in five patient rooms, so we need to spread that to the whole unit. And lastly, um, we're, we're hoping that to share the information between Cyprus and Earth, between Sunrise and Regina, that we can come up with a technological solution instead of faxing back and forth. And we've had conversations with IT. We hope that we may even have that solved by next week. But we do need a list of the users in Sunrise that would need access to the Regina system. So what did we learn this week? Well, first and foremost, if you caught a glimpse of that video, we learned that our patient advisor, Bill, was a terrific actor. <laughs> and you'd like to know he's a great singer, too. He's uh, really livened up our week. We also learned that we need to work on our own processes while we can work with other regions as well. Target discharge data on the whiteboards do decrease patient stress and facilitate a discharge in a more timely and satisfactory manner. And we learned that rapid improvement is possible. For summarizing our workshop, we developed new whiteboards with patient milestones which have enhanced communication with patients, families, and the rest of the care team. We started daily telephone huddles with Sunrise to provide them advance notice of patients being transferred back. No patient transfers have been delayed due to no bed available in Sunrise since we started the RPIW at RGH. Standardized patient information to send back with patients so as to improve continuity of care and reduce all that confusion about what was to be sent. We reduced the confusion and clarified that it will be the sending region who calls for the ambulance. We lowered the photocopier, as you saw from Gloria, and we reduced the lead time or the length of stay for patients transferring to Sunrise. We have many, many people to thank this week. We had so many people help us out, but specifically I want to highlight, uh, it was great to work with Sunrise Health Region, this simultaneous RPIW, and uh, we had several conversations often in a day, so that was they're great to work with. And lastly, I just want a special shout out to our illustrious patient advisor, Bill Tarr. Yeah. Oh, it's crying time again. You're going to miss us. We can see that look of sadness in your eyes. We can tell by the way you're staring at us that it won't be long until it's crying time. <laughs> with this great group of people and um, this is what we had every day of the week. You know, they, you know, they didn't mention this, this group never bombed out on Wednesday like generally they do. That's because we had a bill there. He was keeping us up all the time. <laughs> if it wasn't a song, it was a joke. Uh, but one thing that's really great about this team, I mean, they, they, they really kept working extremely hard, found answers, solutions. Uh, Failed, went back out, tried something else, and and kept proceeding this until this thing really worked. And I and I really have to compliment each and every one of them for getting together and working as a team. We had two teams working, and they just all discussed the situation. And I think that whiteboard, when you stop and think about how that projects or predicts um, the discharge to the to the to, to another hospital, how the patient knows about it, if the patient's destined to go home instead of to the hospital, well then all of a sudden the family knows about it. So I think one of the greatest innovations that came out of this team was, I mean there are whiteboards all over the medical center, but I think this one actually is, is patient focused. And that, that's what we're all about anyway, right? We want to focus on the patient that's really interesting. Once that happens, everything just sort of falls into place. So um, in looking at the Sunrise group, okay, so we we, pro we projected our discharge so that we could get the patients out of this hospital. So just think about this same program, hopefully in a week or two, that goes down to the Sunrise Hospital, and then all of a sudden they're using this program to get patients out of their institution, and 
probably been at the patient's home and the patient down there will know they're going home. So this is just keep dominoing all the way down the system with the standard work. And we think it's solid enough that we can actually move it out to any other hospital and it should work just as well as it works here. So now we'll move on to the Sunrise Group. Do you want to make a few comments first? I'm going to make the introduction, but if you... Okay, no, no, no. <laughs> Hi, um, so I'm going to, I guess, uh, 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 transition here from the uh, presentation from the Regina Group and introduce uh, Sue Ann Laurent, who is the team lead. Uh, before I do that, I just want to echo uh, the words about uh, the great work done here uh, at, at Regina General. Um, and I, I want to pick up on uh, the, the thoughts about seeing this through the eyes of the patient. And as I make the, uh, I guess I'm going to throw it over to summarize, the other thing that stood out for me is the group here seeing their processes through the eyes of the, the Yorkton Hospital and Sunrise Health Authority. And it wasn't just about solving your own problems here, but I heard of, through several of, the, several of the speakers, you were looking at what it is that your customer needs, in this case, uh, the, rece the receiving hospital. So along with uh, seeing it through the eyes of the patient, seeing it through the eyes of Sue Ann and, so, and, and her team and the patients who are going back to, to summarize. So with that, I will uh, turn it over and look forward to uh, hearing the, the work that uh, took place with the partner RPIW in uh, in the Thank you. Hello, New York. Can you hear us? Sunrise, can you hear us? We can hear you. Okay, yeah, you're. We're waiting for you. You're ready to go. We're, we're, as so soon as you're ready. Can you see us now? Can you see us now? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. So yes. first of all, just to note, uh, there's a couple places that don't have their telehealth on mute, and we're hearing background conversations. So specifically, um, the Ministry of Health, if you can mute yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, Cheryl Fox, Director of Patient Safety and Improvement with the Sunrise Health Region, and certainly would like to welcome everybody to the uh, Sunrise Health Region corner of this exciting uh, discharge planning learning uh, initiative, learning journey. Um, I think without further ado, I'll just turn it over to our the team lead for our second RPIW. We're just starting to really get pumped up every Friday afternoon to get to have these conversations and talk about all the great work that's happening across our system. Um, if I could call upon this Thank you, Cheryl. And so um, this has been very, very exciting as, it, as you've heard already and uh, it's continued to go with our report out. And we might even be in a shorter time frame than our tag time because a lot of the things have been explained by Regina, but we'll still absolutely go through the process. So the first part that I'm going to talk about is a standard work combination sheet. And really what that is, is just an agenda, and that will keep us to our tack time of 20 minutes. And you can see on the left-hand side that the, those are all of our team members that are going to report out on their specific areas. <laughs> and on the next one is our, we have the fabulous team. We had a, just a really hard-working, perseverance, get knocked down, get up again, and go out there kind of team. And so uh, we decided to call ourselves the Rock and Roll It Out team. So there's a picture of all of them, and they will each introduce themselves as they come up. So just to speak to our RPIW project form, as was mentioned, it's our second RPIW. You know, go big or go home, I guess. It's our second one, and we're, we're doing it provincial-wide. And what we were focused on was looking at deep 
defect-free transfer of patients from Regina to Sinai's acute care facilities. And some of the, the scope that we were actually looking at was including patients being transferred from Regina General to Sunrise Acute Care Facilities. And some of the targets that you'll hear more about as our team gets up is that we wanted to reduce our lead time to 11 and a half hours, which would be a 50% improvement from where we are, where we were. We wanted to reduce the number of patients that don't transfer when Regina was ready to, so we want to pull our patients home and to also reduce by 50% the number of times that Sunrise does not receive notice at D minus three. And we were never, um, before this process, going through the RPIW, we didn't receive notice 100% of the time um, from Regina when people were coming forward. So that gave us a lot of planning time through this process. We also wanted to reduce by 50% the number of times that the utilization, utilization coordinator does not receive complete information on first call for the bed. So that's what we focused on this week. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Roberta Wittrick and I'm the sub-team lead for this RPIW and I'll be reporting on the target progress. So what we looked at were measures of the space and we looked at one patient room which was 85 square feet. Our inventory was lost bed days annually which is 140 bed days. The walking distance was for the utilization coordinator. She walked 6,732 feet in a day. Our lead time initially was 30 hours and 10 minutes. And Sue Ann had mentioned the defects we were looking at were the number of patients that don't transfer when Regina is ready to transfer. And our baseline was 50%. The number of times that Sunrise did not get informed of the discharge minus three was 100%. And the number of times that Sunrise did not receive the complete information on the first call to the utilization coordinators was also 100%. So our target for all those defects was 0%. The 5S was of the UC binder, and the initial score was 2.1. The setup was UC rounding time at 90 minutes. The cycle time, which included the doctor to doctor, UC finding a bed, and patient arriving in Sunrise was 70 minutes capacity of 7.29. Calculation of our tap time, we looked at one shift per day of 12 hours. We took into consideration the times for breaks, the report to the next shift, and also rounding. So we have a total minutes available in a day of 510 minutes. The patients per day, which is our units, is 0.4. So our tap time was 1,275 1, minutes. Our current value stream map, our first step was the doctor in Regina would phone the doctor in Sunrise. That would take 10 minutes. The second step, the utilization coordinator would find a bed, it took 30 minutes, and the patient was received at Sunrise another 30 minutes. So that's a total time or value of one hour and 10 minutes of value add time. The time in between, there was 24 hours between the first and second step, and five hours in between the second and third step of non-value add time of 29 hours. So we wanted to work towards improving that. Our future state map, we look at the same three boxes of information. <coughs> we want to be sure that we have D minus three or 72 hours notice in order to achieve that. So we have the utilization coordinator assigning the patient to the appropriate bed. That's now our first one. <coughs> the utilization coordinator can make those arrangements so we have the patient going to the proper location in Sunrise South Region. We still have the doctor to doctor and nurse to nurse referral, and then find the patient is received in Sunrise. The value add time of that is 30 minutes, and the non-value add time is 71 minutes, and sorry, 71 hours and 31 minutes. So overall, we have a value add of 72 hours. Now that has increased from our current state map, but if we can increase our lead time to 72 hours, we're having that D minus three, we'll have everything in place, and we'll have a value add of 100%. Like our Cynthia with this one, I'm a team member. Being that our utilization coordinator is such a vital part of our admissions, transfers, and discharges, the rock and roll team decided to 5S the binder, which means
means to sort, simplify, sweep, standardize, and self-discipline. Here are some pictures of our before reminder. Our pre-Kaizen score was 2.1 out of 5, and our goal was to improve by 50%. We met our target post-Kaizen score of 4 out of 5, and here are our time reminder. Hello, my name is Charmaine Mailing. I'm one of the utilization coordinators here at Sunrise, Puritan Regional Health Center. I may be a little bit unnerved because they're, they're showing a video of me in the background here. <laughs> and so what uh, my talk about is the spaghetti map diagram, and it shows our steps in a day and uh, the units that we go to. And so pre kaizen we had a total of 6,000. 732 feet that we walk in a day. Post Kaizen, we have 7,986 feet. And so what this does show uh, for our spaghetti chart is that even though we're taking more steps in a day, we're gaining three days notice of patients returning to Sunrise Health Region, and we also gain standard work practice for the UCs. Good afternoon, my name is Laura Lee Susick, and I'm a participant for this RPRW. As already explained, we spoke about how the patient goes through the process. Now we're going to speak about the staff <coughs> going through their processes. We follow our utilization coordinator as shown on the standard work combination sheet, both prior to the RPIW week and during that week. And then uh, the percent load chart displays how this work is broken down between the collecting and sharing of information, the coordinating, the admission, discharge, transfer, and scheduling of staff, as well as their breaks. So what we found the difference between the two was that uh, we reduced the amount of time uh, in collecting the information and coordinating the transfers just by going through this process of, uh, with Regina. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shelley Cook. I'm also a team member. We wanted to find out what was happening on the floor through the utilization of the floor team's experience. So we used the time observations for pre and post Kaizen, even though our time increased, it is because we now receive notice up to 72 hours before the patient comes back, which enhances coordination for our patients and helps the UC plan in a coordinated fashion. Hi, my name is Stacey Fanchin, I'm a team member. I'm just going to talk about the idea summary sheets um, that guided us down our process. So the first thing we identified is that um, having the existing, the existing process is that the utilization coordinator in Sunrise Health Region would be required to book the ambulance for patients returning back to Sunrise Health Region. So we identified that if the uh, facility that's sending the patient had, had booked the ambulance, it would be more beneficial to our patients and it would also help us in receiving the estimated time of arrival and planning for that patient's arrival. The next idea sheet shows the current process being that the physician um, contact was made through another physician and that's how the patient would re-enter the Sunrise Health Region. We identified that if the utilization coordinator was a single point of entry for all patients back to Sunrise Health Region, it would streamline the process for us and help us um, receive the D-3 notification required to ensure that our patients receive the right care at the right time, in the right place, and from the right team. The third idea summary was in regards to the flow of information. We identified that there's currently a, a large variation in the information that our utilization coordinators <coughs> and nursing staff are receiving. So we thought if we standardized the information that was sent back to our facility, it would help us in providing appropriate care to our patients. We developed a checklist to help us with that and shared it with Regina Coppell, and they then went on to develop their own checklist for the information they would send. We also developed a utilization coordinator transfer checklist that they would begin to fill out when the transfer process was initiated, and then that would be passed on to the nursing staff when the patient was to arrive in Sunrise. Hi everyone, my name is Kate Delaney. I am also one of the team members for this discharge process at the OW. 
I'm here to talk to you about the standard work that we've created around that utilization coordinator checklist that we did develop in cahoots with Regina. Uh, I'm also going to talk to you about the standard work that we've developed with the 5S binder, uh, 5S thing, sorry, the utilization coordinator binder, which was spoken to by Sydney, and uh, the regional training for the utilization coordinator checklist which has been sent out to the necessary areas. So we'll start with the UC checklist. When we developed this tool after figuring out our process as such, uh, we needed a tool for collecting correct information. We also needed a format that would allow both areas, so Regina Propel Health Region and Sunrise Health Region to use that tool as one and then send that on via email or fax to the next <coughs> area. So for instance, the utilization coordinator in Regina would start filling out this section here and some pertinent information up top. They would then pass it to Charmaine, our utilization coordinator here. Charmaine would then go ahead and call, uh, get a phone call from them, sorry, that day saying, this is the information, this is the patient, they are D minus such day. Then Charmaine would go and call the ward that they were going, that they were on, sorry, in Regina Capella <coughs> and she would say, I need the rest of the information listed below as a to the patient to be able to best designate our resources and the correct facility to the patient, which is currently not being done due to lack of correct communication between the two utilization coordinators and the current process. Now, we've had to develop standard work around that checklist, which is to just define the exact process I've just told you about and then sending on that process to the receiving facility that that patient will be going to. Uh, for the 5S binder, we've developed standard work, which is a very simple form here, to say that the utilization coordinators are in charge of updating and completing this particular area of the binder on a daily or a weekly basis, and that the administration staff working in cahoots with utilization coordinators will be involved in updating the weekly and the monthly sections of, say, section two to five. The regional training for the utilization coordinator checklist, we've planned <coughs> that as a necessary component. Uh, Roberta has sent out a email to the regional managers within the Sunrise Health Region, notifying them of the change of process. We've then sent out, Stacy and myself, an email on behalf of the RPOW team, notifying the regional managers that everybody needs to be trained on this process, whether they be the facility manager or the acute unit staff in that facility. And from then, we hope to increase uh, the utilization of all of the Sunrise Health Region acute facilities and resources. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is June Vizlowski, and I'm part of this wonderful team for the whole week. Uh, these are some of the quotes that we received from several people during the week. From a utilization coordinator, this is so exciting, what a positive experience. This is what I have always wanted. From a patient rep, nurses, please listen to your patients. For a nurse, daily rounds are so important, I will lost without them. From the utilization coordinator, I can see this working, it's functional. And from a nurse, nurse to nurse, checklist look useful. From another nurse, it is so important that we maintain patient flow in all our beds, ensuring that the beds are properly utilized is our responsibility. Working on projects like this, RPIW are essential to ensuring we can continue to offer world-class health. And from a doctor, this process will be better. We, we still will have things to work out as we go, but we will work it out. Thank you. Hi, my name is Shannon Schmidt, and I'm the audit lead the target progress report and results sheet highlights some key areas where change has occurred. The space per day per patient saved at our QHR had 100% change. The annual bed loss inventory had 100% change. The number of patients 
that were not transferred when vagina was ready, we saw 100% change. The number of times Sunrise was not informed of discharge by D minus three had a 25% change. And the number of times Sunrise did not receive complete information on the first call had a 100% change. Our RPIW newspaper highlighted areas that we need to continue to work on over the next months. And um, the first one is training. All staff need to be trained on the standard work that was developed. And audits need to be completed at 30, 60, and 90 days. Our workshop summary. We are now receiving D-3 notice for clients that are repatriated to our region. Region-wide repatriation through a single point of entry is the uh, call to the utilization coordinator. Defect-free information. The use of our checklist and standard work for the utilization coordinator and the nurse to nurse will facilitate that process. <coughs> the sending facility Virginia is now booking our ambulance for transfer. Utilization coordinator's resource finder underwent a 5S process which now ensures that they have the right information at the right time. The morning huddles with Regina between utilization coordinators has also been implemented. Hello, I'm Lenny Garvin, the uh, patient rep. I have some thank yous to make. Uh, first, the utilization coordinators, Deb and Bert and Kim. Sponsors, Diane and Nola. Process owners, Brenda and Jennifer. Contact experts, Dr. Furry, Dr. O'Donton, Dr. Dubal, Dr. Drew, Greer, Sharon, Elizabeth and Terry. The GO team, Carol Ritchie, Regina RP, one IW team. Health service team, Tricia, Sandy and Mary. Our patient reps, June and Winnie. Diane, Jackie. Inpatients providing feedback to team, Chris. Jennifer, Laura Lee, Sharon, JBE consultant Mike Bouchard, all inpatient units at YRHC, multidisciplinary team members at Rounds, Dr. Manyanda, Johnny Utilization Order, and telephone, telehealth support. So, hello, hello again, and uh, just to uh, close off this part of it, as a team lead, I couldn't be more excited. The, the amount of work that's happened um, throughout this whole week and weeks before, both in Sunrise and uh, in, in Regina are, are unparalleled to any transformation that uh, I've seen, because it's only my second RPIW, but it's just uh, quite amazing. Uh, great job, team. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. You all worked very hard this week. It was tons of perseverance, and you did it every time. And what's amazing is that we've achieved and we're well on our way to changing this process in one week, which will improve our process for our patients, our staff, and our teams. I'd like to do an extra call out for our patient reps, Winnie and June. Woohoo! <laughs> Working with our patients through lean will transform our processes for a better tomorrow together. I would like to now thank very much our, our guide, our helper throughout the week, our JBA consultants, Michael Char, to say a few words. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. You know, the, uh, the main thing, I think, I would say as I think back on this week is uh, the first thing that comes to mind is positive energy. So it's been an absolute thrill throughout. I, mean, I don't think I ever heard one time we can't because or it won't work because. I don't think I ever heard that uh, even once. So everything was about, oh, uh, okay, there's an idea, let's go out and give it a try. So we stumbled plenty of times, we made lots of mistakes, we recouped, we came back, we adjusted, we went out and tried again. and the really wonderful thing about this RBIW is we got to do it with a team uh, that we were partnering with in Regina. And so the discharge process from Regina to Sunrise really got us the flavor of what it was like to have two teams working together on the same project. And I know it was the first for John Usick and myself, 
uh, working on a project like that where we are uh, where we're partnering, and uh, we both had a lot of fun working on this process, and I think everybody's learned an awful lot about it. Now, I think uh, probably one of the uh, most important things uh, is that we improved capacity here, and we did it without adding beds, and we did it without adding staff. And really, we did it just by changing the way we think a little bit and the way we operate a little bit. When I say we added capacity, we have added capacity. Uh, Regina will get 140 extra bed days uh, from this point forward over the next year's period of time beyond what they would have had. That's 140 patients. So, so it's a very important thing to think about. We've improved capacity, and we've done it without adding uh, uh, any cost to the system. And we also got the benefit of all of us getting to learn to work together and work through some of the details. Lots of interesting times throughout the week, we made assumptions from both uh, Regina's end and from Sunrise's end on what we thought the motive was for a particular event to happen. And then we asked the question, what, uh, what happens on your end? And we got the real answer. And, and I don't know how many times I heard this week, oh, that's why. But we had already decided, hadn't we? You know, and, and it's a very natural thing for us to do. We already decided what we think you need. We already decided what we think you your motive was. And then we find out later when we simply ask the question, or uh, in a sense go to the gamba, we simply ask the question, uh, what really was your motive and what really uh, uh, was driving you? So the, the other thing I'd like to point out is that uh, Mark Wyatt uh, had mentioned earlier today uh, that uh, this is something that we had been working on for years. This discharge process is something we're working on for years. I had uh, somebody in our meeting, it was either early this morning or it was sometime yesterday, somebody in our meeting said uh, that the, uh, what were we talking about? Healthcare, right? I think we might have been. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lenore's trying to get me to stand over a little closer. <laughs> so anyway, the, uh, uh, Okay, <laughs> healthcare, right? <laughs> All right, I guess we'll move beyond that point. So we had uh, uh, one of the great benefits that we had uh, was that in one week's period of time, we did something that, uh, that we normally would have taken uh, many months or even a couple of years uh, going to meetings about. And I thought to myself for a moment, uh, well, is that really true? Did we really get that? And then I realized, yes, it probably is true. We did get that because what we got is that we will, from this point forward, have patients leave from Regina the moment they're ready to leave. And that's the point. So the moment they're ready to leave, they will leave Regina and they will come to uh, Sunrise. And so there'll be no wait time whatsoever. So we really did achieve the goal. Now we've got lots of details to work out from this day forward, but we did achieve the end goal. And it's a goal that we'd oftentimes take many months or many years to try to perfect before we implemented it. The, the next thing that we got from this process is that in the end, uh, if people move more quickly through the discharge process, then in the end, they'll move more quickly through the surgery process. And that means they'll move more quickly into the surgery process. And we'll eventually start to see backlogs come down. So we have taken a step along the path towards our goal of making sure that our patients get to have their surgery within three months of the time that we find out that they need to have surgery. So what a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing for us to have taken a step towards, and we have taken a big step in that direction. Okay, once again, I gotta say thank you to this group. Positive energy again, I think we gotta keep our eye on these folks. They're gonna just get right out in front and show us where to go and how to get there. So good job, guys. We have two um, sponsors for this RKW from the uh, Sunrise perspective, and we're going to give them each a, you know, a minute to give some comments. So we have Diane McDougall, and then we'll ask Nola Walsh to come up. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I am just very excited that we were able to participate in this collaborative. I think that it is much more meaningful to the patients. Um, and I think we heard that from our um, two very engaged and very, very informative um, patients who came on with our team and worked with us and 
gave us suggestions and ideas and uh, critiques. Um, I think that working with the Regina team was another learning environment, and we really, uh, I think, collaborated in a great way. Both sides learned lots about each other, and um, I think it can't be anything but positive from here on. So I just want to say a huge thank you both to Don Calder and the group in Regina and to Suan um, as team lead for our crew, and um, we'll just continue. So thanks, everyone. <laughs> uh, I just want to say thanks as well, and I know that it was a really tough week. We go down every day at 4 o'clock, and the team just looked like they were exhausted. They had worked all day so hard, so I just want to say thank you, and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens over the next while and how we improve, and I know that it's going to benefit the clients for sure, so thank you. To uh, process owners Brandon McLean and Jennifer Domi to come up and just give us uh, you know 30 seconds even.
been fabulous watching and being part of the process going on in two different places yet absolutely connected together using teleconference and telehealth methodology. I think we're, we're all here about patient care and to say that 140 days have been saved in terms of, of uh, the process, that gives 140 days towards surgical care elsewhere, which means that about 35 people a year will have access to hip and knee arthroplasty surgery as a result of this initiative. It is all about patient care, and it is all about using tools and techniques, and in this case, lean technology, in order to be able to do that. So I think it's the patients of Saskatchewan who have benefited uh, profoundly from this initiative. And I think those of us who are who are uh, who have observed the work of these teams can be humbled in the fact that simple application of technology to the processes we're <coughs> monitoring from day to day can yield such great benefit to our patients. So my congratulations to everyone. And I believe we have one final speaker. I think this is truly our final speaker, uh, Michael Redenbach, uh, Vice President with Regina Capella Health. Thank you. You were probably worried there wouldn't be more speakers, so thank goodness I'm still here. Uh, actually, I'm here on behalf of uh, Sue Neville. Uh, she was the sponsor for the uh, RPIW uh, housed out of uh, RQHR. Um, so I'll, I'll do my best to uh, pretend I know what I think she might want to say. Uh, but I know she'd want to say, first of all, thank you and congratulations to the team and to everybody uh, in Yorkton as well in the Sunrise Health region. Uh, this particular piece of work, um, although it is just one piece of the puzzle that we have to work on with regards to patient flow, is a big piece. Um, not only for what it demonstrates uh, for transfers back and forth, but I think it it sets us up for whatever other future improvement initiatives that we need to undertake that involves a cooperative effort amongst health regions. So I want to uh, thank the team, uh, the teams uh, for the work that they've done and for laying the foundation for uh, a bunch of other improvement works that uh, we don't even know what they might be uh, coming up into the future. Uh, I'm hugely excited to uh, see us sustain this work and spread it across the whole health region and uh, across Saskatchewan. Um, so uh, again, well done, thank you, and uh, uh, we're really, really looking forward to seeing where this goes from here. Thanks. That's it. I think everything's being said that needs to be said. I was going to uh, offer a word about how this is a great example of thinking and acting as one, but I think we got a better word for that out of Yorkton today, which is cahoots. So from now on, we're going to talk about thinking and acting as one across the healthcare system. We can just say working in cahoots. So uh, again, a big thank you to all the teams and for all of the cahoots you've been part of this week.